we caught the species we want. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> With our lures that we made in our own microwave. And that's uh, very satisfying because a lot of times we come out and we don't do anything successful. All right, our camera woman, Shiho, is giving you more realistic candy adventures fishing experience. So the exit from this place is up. It's not just one waterfall, it's seven. And uh, I love heights <laughs> a lot. I love them. Super looking forward to this. Start it. Nobody knows. <laughs> okay. Welcome back to Candy Adventures. I'm Chris. And I'm Elizabeth. And today we're going to show you guys how you can make your own lures at home. We're going to be molding our own soft plastic lures. These are our human lures that we've used in a previous video and named them Brandon. Let's go, Brandon. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, Brandon. See? <laughs> but it's a human body shaped lure. And unfortunately, the company that we bought these from, Victim Baits, I don't think they uh, make these any longer, or if they do, that would be great to get some more. So to go around that. We bought some of these small little molds, these little silicone molds uh, on Etsy, which is my favorite website in the whole world at the moment. They are a little small, this one, but I think it's gonna be great for the species we're going after today. And this one's the same thing, it's a different style, but it's another silicone mold that I believe is for some sort of small doll making or for miniatures. And what we're gonna do is fill it up with uh, melted in the microwave, chopped up uh, soft plastic lures. So you can re-liquify lures in the microwave by simply cutting them up so you have more surface area to them and running them in the microwave until they turn into liquid. This sounds super like it wouldn't work, but we're gonna see if it does. We watched a few videos. And then we also got these lures, which are a little more voluptuous and larger than we thought. As you can see, these lures have uh, butts and nipples. Are you allowed to say nipples on the internet? I can say nipples all I want. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I have three of them. I think I have more rights than anyone else to say the word nipples. He doesn't have three nipples. So all we're gonna do is chop these up into a microwavable glass container. They're gonna melt faster this way, like small pieces of cheese or anything. You get more surface area, it's gonna heat up faster. So we're taking some professionally made baits, uh, made by people who know what they're doing, destroying them, remolding them into something that we've made. All right, so these are gonna go in the microwave and we're gonna watch these bad boys melt. Bad girls, these are female lures. I ordered a male lure, but none of them came in. So I just have all these Ladies. very voluptuous little lady lures, uh, very thick little lures here. All right, so this is gonna go in the microwave. In our trash kitchen, I'm going to put it on for five minutes and just keep watching it as it melts. So as these baits start heating up, you get a really good aroma in the surrounding air. And that's how you know they're really cooking. I don't know if it's toxic or not. So at your own risk, please. Who knows if this is toxic? You can see it's already turned into liquid. I'm just going to stir it a little, some of those pieces, and put it back in and just keep watching. It might stir it one, one or two more times. Our standards for these are very low. They're probably gonna be filled with bubbles and they're not gonna have clean edges, but I think as long as they have the general shape, they will accomplish the job. That was two minutes, uh, taking it out to stir one time and it is completely liquid now. All right, so we're basically just going to dump this into these molds and smash the molds together and see how that works. All right, so I'm in this mold. The small molds are gonna be hard. They're so teeny tiny. And you can see there's air bubbles in there. All right, now I'm gonna put, this is cooled just a little bit, hopefully not too much, and I'm gonna put this together. And hopefully it's still uncured enough to stick both sides together. Nope. All right, that didn't work. But again, what's nice about this is that you can reuse this plastic and give it another shot. So there's our little lady in there. You can see there's were some air bubbles. This is not perfect. Uh, I believe they injection mold this normally. And there is our little lady. And you can see there's the outline here. We just have to trim off all these little outside pieces 
and we'll have our little lady fishing lure. I like the natural movement it has. A human lure has so many little wiggly parts. So we actually went with the most complex shape we probably could have for our first molds. So these, for example, they're flat on the top. So this would be when you pour it in, the liquid falls into all of the little cavities, and then it's a flat top. So because we want a body that has a front and a back, we've made it more difficult for ourselves. But this would be the more traditional, easy at home pour mold shape with a, with a flat side somewhere. That's really neat. So you can see that this one, <laughs> this one is um, basically just an onion and a torso, how this is designed. This is called a chibi figure. And I think chibi means small and cute in Japanese. And I think it's a whole art style of like cutesy things. As you can see here, we had a friend draw us uh, in a chibi art style about a year ago. Uh -huh. And so here's some artwork we, that we put up on Instagram that we really like. And so that kind of ties into this chibi thing is that's a chibi art style and this is a chibi art style uh, female form. So you can see that came out a lot easier. And I think that's gonna be really neat. And again, it's very small, but it's gonna have a lot of movement in the water for the fish. And you can see the size difference here. I went ahead and threw a jig head in this one. And with the jig head inside this one, it looks like it's wearing a hoodie. So we're gonna make a couple more options and then head to the water to go test these out. And of course we're going for jungle perch. Shiho, do you wanna make a, do you wanna do a pour? There you go. <laughs> wow, you're a DIY craft channel now. <laughs> all right, so we're all gonna get loaded up in the car. We're gonna head down south a little bit to either, no Mona, you cannot come. We're gonna either head to Sella or Seti Bay. I never remember, but Shiho knows where we're going and she's behind you on the camera and she's gonna, she's gonna show us and hopefully go to try to catch some jung jungle perch with our little lures. So let's get in the car and get to fishing. No, All right, so we did the uh, excruciatingly long journey of about 30 minutes of a pleasant car ride. And we're gonna head down there and see if we can get on some jungle perch with our handmade lure. It's gonna be a fun little hike. It's really beautiful today. It's not raining right this moment, but it probably will. And uh, we've got multiple options of the lures we made to choose from. So excited to test them out and hopefully land at least one fish. Come on fam, let's get to walking. We are descending approximately 200 feet in elevation down to the Seti River Valley. 200 feet doesn't sound like a lot, but it can be a very steep and slippery 200 feet. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> He's just taking a break. <laughs> So we were droning to try to, you know, help convey the story and give some beautiful shots. But we do not like droning around any people, so as soon as we saw a person, we just immediately took it down. So back to droning. <laughs> wow! Parkour! Parkour! Also, like most hikes on Guam, there are ropes to help people go up or down these much steeper areas or slippery areas. However, none of these trails are actually owned or maintained by a specific agency or government of Guam. So these ropes are put in by hiking groups or random people. These jungle perch we're after are catadromous, meaning they reproduce in saltwater and move into freshwater to eat and grow. You'd think you'd only find these fish in bays with close proximity to the ocean, but we have found these fish so far up rivers, above 20 foot waterfalls, miles away from the ocean in the middle of the mountains here in Guam. And we are just fascinated by these little aggressive monsters. This river we're headed to actually does flow into an ocean bay, so there's a 99.9% .9 chance that they are in there. After building up um, enough sweat to rinse off all the bug spray, we've now entered the new biome of the jungle, where all the mosquitoes happen to be. And now my bug spray is no longer on my body. <laughs> all right, so as you can see here, um, these jungle perch amaze me. 
we are in a very small pool in the middle of the jungle and we're above how many waterfalls? A couple, but there's there's seven up there, so we're still below waterfall. We're, we're above multiple waterfalls. Uh, somehow, these gully washing rains that come, um, it's a mountaintop above it. I will never understand how fish like trout and these jungle perch stay in these 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 pools above waterfalls. I, I, I can't fathom how they stay up here when it's a torrential rain and they get washed out and they're still here. These aren't stocked. These aren't managed by people. Um, so it just blows my mind that these little fish um, can get up here above waterfalls. And sometimes I've seen these things up above waterfalls that are 10, 15, 20 feet high. No way that a, a, even a salmonoid could swim up it, let alone, uh, you know, some jungle perch. Um, so fascinating. But anyway, we're on the, on the right track. We find in our jungle perch, we're going to find some bigger pools, which surprisingly is going to be farther up the mountain at the base of some waterfalls. So uh, you can see these guys are hungry. They're hitting the top of the water. And hopefully we can find some bigger ones and get up here and test our lures out. I know there's been studies on barramundi in Australia and how uh, these cane toad eggs, which is all what's in this river right here, um, are poisonous to fish. But some of the barramundi have figured out, I don't, that scientists don't know how, but not to eat them. And what I find fascinating is that this is full of jungle perch and it's full of cane toad, toad eggs and they're not eating them. Um, so jungle perch and cane toads would have never been in contact with each other until they were introduced in Australia, the cane toads, and then also introduced in Austra uh, Guam as a form of pest control. So to see these fish have somehow figured out not to eat these poisonous little delicious tidbits is again, also fascinating to me. And it's such a short period of time because I think the cane toads were introduced in like the 60s. These fish have no fear as you can see uh, around my feet here. I don't know if it's the red color or what, but they really like being around my shoelaces and my shoes. So this is a, a good sign that hopefully they'll be willing to bite a lure and not uh, too skittish. And there's that creepy eel coming towards my red shoes. Oh no. Um, I see these uh, fish like playing with my leg hairs. Kind of reminds me of that story that Corn Pop told about the kids in the swimming pool liking to twist up his leg hairs and play with them. I got hairy legs that turn that 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 turn uh, uh um blonde in the sun and the kids used to come up and reach in the pool and rub my leg down so it was straight and then watch the hair c come back up again we just come up on this really small pool right here but inside that pool is one of the biggest jungle perch that i've personally seen on guam it's a monster the devil of the deep the moby dick the white whale. White whale. Hmm? Moby Dick. Of jungle perch. So I've always said, people keep asking, why don't you do a, a jungle perch catch and cook, catch and cook? Well, it's because the fishery is so small and I've always said it has to be a really big jungle perch before I'm gonna keep it. And so that's the definitely one of the biggest ones I've seen. So if we can get on this big perch, we'll do a catch and cook with this guy. So let's see if our- Lures. Rigged up human lures here are going to put us on a jungle perch. Our super creepy little handmade lures are gonna be put to the test. Here we go. Dramatic music. <laughs> Instant. Oh yeah. So there we go. <laughs> that was literally two seconds. Oh my God, Ooh. that thing is like a bass. Oh that my is God. The biggest jungle perch I have ever caught. <laughs> One cast. Um, because you know on Candy Adventures, on Candy Adventures, that's what we do. One one cast is how we always do it. We Ooh. always succeed. But look at how big that is. He ate the whole human. That was our bigger human lure. That's our human lure. Alright. So biggest jungle perch. We're gonna do a catch and cook with this guy. So this is super excited. First cast, our lures work. So Hit I'm gonna put it. this guy out of his misery and get him on ice. All right, so that was super awesome and unexpected. Uh, one cast with a handmade lure that we just made catching the biggest jungle perch that we've ever caught is a super fun experience. So now Elizabeth's gonna take her turn catching some. We're gonna keep walking up the mountain, which again, seems really counterintuitive. We're gonna keep walking up this mountain uh, and to the base of a waterfall and see if we can catch some there. Then after that, we're gonna climb up the mountain, up uh, seven waterfalls to go back to the car. And uh, I love heights. A lot. I love them. Super looking forward to this. Um, but at least I have the peace of mind knowing, even though I hate heights, that there's a jungle perch in the backpack that we're going to go home and do a catch and cook. So 
Let's keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Look at that monster! <laughs> it's like almost as big as Chris's, so you know, that's impressive. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> All right, our camera woman Shiho is giving you more realistic candy adventures fishing experience where we're in a pool full of fish and uh, none of them want to bite. So. This is more our style here. This is more what you come to expect from our channel. Shiho, super awesome fish, right at the base of this waterfall. Awesome. Nice. Hand poured lures. Woo! Now it is the lure that I poured. That is not the lure that Shiho poured. Uh, it is the lure I poured. It is, it is. Also fun fact, that's the same fishing reel that they used last week for underwater fishing. I got outfished by Chris and the camera woman, but we caught fish with our lures that we made in our own microwave. We caught the species we set out to catch in a sensible amount of time. We're gonna be leaving before it's dark. Uh, so the only thing that's left to do now, we got a jungle perch in the backpack. We're gonna get back and cook it. But first, the exit, it's basically a loop it makes when we come in here. You come down this hiking trail and then you exit kind of up this more vertical section. There's like seven of these waterfalls. Yep, so you climb up seven different waterfalls. This is called SETI 7. So <laughs> we're gonna crush this and hopefully not have a heart attack because it's pretty vertical and the hardest I can go on. So let's get out of here. I know it's hard when you're moving too fast. You gotta go a little bit lower. Okay, oh wait, no, the other one too. Wait, come back up a little bit. Okay, now you're good. Now you're in the back. Yep, now your backpack's gonna get caught. <laughs> yep. Yep. Very nice. Alright, so that's the path out. Today is really going downhill for me. Uphill, but mentally this is a real downhill thing. So that's the way out. I don't like heights, don't have a choice about it. Um, I've been getting mocked by to women all day and I uh, can't have women be mocking me because then I would feel lesser. So I have to do this. So Godspeed. This is where Daddy Chris has a little bit more uh, mama bird energy. Uh, he gets more scared for other people than himself. I am so nervous when I do all this stuff. I get so scared. Every job I've ever had has had heights, um, including my current job. And I hate them uh, every time that I do them. And it seems to be a reoccurring uh, piece of my life. Like there's nothing you can do. That's what really scares me. It's like, you're gonna watch it happen. Just a month ago, a woman fell and had to be airlifted, I hear, from a helicopter. So I hope that lady's doing well, if she's watching, which I doubt she is, but hope she's doing well. But it's a, just a reality that you can get really hurt out here, especially on this trail. I'm in no 
like that. In my head, I see little slips. Everybody's falling today, and then we stand on the edge of something. And what if it's then? <laughs> Very pretty. All right, so we so we uh, clambered up to this point so far. We almost lost the drone. We've all slipped and fallen a little bit, and my heart's come out of my chest a few times. But Shio promised that this is the last rope section, and then we're finally out. He did, uh, and part of me thinks that this whole thing today has been Shiho's way of of punishing me for uh, the joke I made last video, and I think this is her just punishing me. And it, it's okay. Two I deserve my punishment. Ago, yeah. Because don't forget we betrayed her last video. Oh yeah, our, 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 our second betrayal where we had a different camera person. Okay, that's true. <laughs> so we have this one more mini waterfall to climb up. And then after that, it should be home sailing. As you saw from the drone footage, hopefully it showed the, the scope of, you know, just how steep this is if you do come do the SETI 7 while you're on Guam. We're gonna scramble up this one more, uh, probably tied to something secure, probably strong rope and get back to the truck. Big chunk still here. How'd you do it? This is how you cook fish. Well, the cringe is really high today, isn't it? That wasn't cringe. That was good. I'm sure someone will think that's good. This is how we cook fish. <laughs> so today, uh, we had an exhausting day. Ah, out in the jungle, a lot of fire ant bites, a lot of mosquito bites. Yes, I hit a tree of fire ants and they went all down my neck and my back, which was really great. Loved it. But we're back now. My beard's shorter because uh, I retracted it through pure willpower because <laughs> I read the book, The Secret. <laughs> Wish it, want it, do it. We are going to make a jungle perch flatbread sandwich with a three bean salad. Yeah, that sounds good. And we don't discriminate against any of the bean brands here. We have all the major brands. Bushes, Allen's, and Goya. And the other can is corn, and who cares about corn, right? It's subsidized, we, whatever. We turn that into gasoline. Who even cares at this <laughs> point? And we're going to make it with a mayonnaise finadini sauce, which finadini is the local sauce that you put on everything here. Yep. Because um, it's so good. Finadini. We've made it a couple times, but if you're new, it's worth mentioning because it is a really good sauce to add to anything, especially with rice. So, first, soy sauce. Next, vinegar. You can use white vinegar or apple cider vinegar. It has two different tastes. Some people have preferences for either one. Chris likes the white. Next main ingredient is some sort of onion. You can use uh, yellow, white, or a lot of people use green onion. We don't have either of those. This is the last piece of onion we have. This is our junk onion, so it's being used. Use the mousse. Scrape the onion from the mousse. I presume this is a mousse. Next, you need some sort of spice. These are dane peppers or bird peppers. These uh, naturally grow in Guam, um, but we think they're related to Tabasco peppers, so any sort of hot pepper is perfect. I only put a few in there. I'm not a pika fan. Pika is Chamorro for spicy or hot, and I am a wimp. And from here, the recipes can differ a bit. Some people add garlic and some people add some form of citrus like lemon or lime. We have minced garlic, so I'm gonna add just a tiny bit of that and that will basically be our finadeni sauce. Because we want the finadeni to be a spreadable sauce on a sandwich, this is why we're going to add mayonnaise. I don't know if people do this, but we're doing it. Does this make it Miracle Whip now? Because I whipped it together with this looks like a pretty good consistency. Still spreadable without being watery. I think this is pretty good. And now we're gonna go check in with Chris and see how the fish is going. All right, so that's a fish with salt and pepper and a little bit of vegetable oil on a grill. Let the charcoal burn down a lot because I don't want to burn this. And we're just gonna let it sit for a few minutes on one side and then a few minutes on the other side. So that's about as technical as I get with cooking. So. Go ahead and shut this thing. 
I'm gonna have a beer, wait for this to cook, and we can go ahead and be prepping our flatbread portion. Back to the kitchen. Just like that. If you do it any way different than this, you're wrong, and this is gonna turn out like a disaster. Black eyed peas in here. If you use any other kind of bean or pea or legume, uh, it will turn out wrong and it will not be good. And then my grandmother told me as a child that diet was based off of colors and you needed to have uh, you needed to have a yellow and a green every day. So we're going to be throwing our yellow in here and then our green um, we just won't be getting. And that's why my eyes are sunken in and I look sick. Then we have our uh, finadini mayonnaise that we've mixed in and I am going to dump it inside of this just like this. All right, we've got our flatbread buttered up. That's just gonna be in here getting warm and a little bit toasty. Waiting on our fish to get off the grill. Now let's zoom forward in time and get the fish off the grill. All right, so I did almost none of the work, so I think it's time for me to eat this. This is you caught the fish. That's true. This is three years in Guam. Uh, this has become, out of the mahi and the wahoo, this little jungle perch has become my favorite fish to catch. And this is our first catch and cook. This is the first time we've eaten it. So even if this tastes bad. We're going to sell it. You know. You're going to sell it. And it's going to taste better because we've been putting off eating this fish for... <laughs> A week? Two or, two. No, well, two, two or three years. Oh, that's true. Because we've been catch and release only with this fish. So yep. let's see what this thing tastes like. Cheers. The grill actually made it pretty smoky, which is really mm -hmm. good. Yeah, it's really good. Smoky finitity mayonnaise fish. I'm mm. a fan, actually. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty good. Yeah, it's actually really good. Just a flaky white meat. I mean, this fish, uh, if you snuck this and told me it was flounder, I wouldn't know the difference. This is just flaky white meat. Really good. Super good. Mm -hmm. uh, and we'd like to thank you guys for sticking around. For this long video and this is going to be one of our last videos on guam which is kind of bittersweet but we thought we sh we have to do a catch and cook with these jungle perch before we get out of here and do something more epic which was the seti seven waterfall hike yeah so thank you guys for sticking around thank you guys for bumping into us uh out and about from home depot kung Wa. so uh if you yell at us and uh we're not polite <laughs> it's and like i don't roll the truck window down and i see i seem like i seem like i'm being mean it's because my truck windows don't work. <laughs> so if you're one of those people who have waved and- uh, Or honked at us. And I, I look like I'm being uh, matapeng because I'm not waving back. It's, <laughs> it's because my truck windows don't work. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, we hope you stick around for our adventures beyond. So we're gonna probably have a couple more videos here, but this is probably our last catch and cook, catch and cook on Guam. So delicious. Hope you guys enjoyed it and we'll see you next time. Have a good day.